OK, here's our question. How hot should the Earth be on average? In fact, the technique we're going to use will apply to any planet. We know that some planets are hot, some are cold. Why? What sets their temperature? This is actually a calculation that was worked out originally in the 19th century, and the answer turned out quite surprising. So, what sets the, the temperature of anything? Well, that's the amount of thermal energy in it. Um, and if something is at a constant temperature, the amount of thermal energy coming in must equal the amount of thermal energy going out. So if you've got the Earth, we've got thermal energy coming in, and that's coming in from the sun. So that's sunlight. Um, we've also got a bit of energy coming from the middle in the form of volcanoes, um, but that turns out to be negligible. There's a lot of energy in the middle of the Earth, but there's a very thick crust of rock which acts as a very good insulator and stops it contributing very much to the temperature at the surface. But then you've got heat going out, because if it was just heat coming in from the sun, we'd just get hotter and hotter and hotter until we all melted. So we've got heat coming out, which is radiation from the Earth. So the balance... They must be balanced, because the Earth on average is not getting hotter or colder, or at least not very much. So we set the heat in equals heat out, and that will give us the temperature. Heat in. What's the heat in? Um, you can look up the solar constant. which is the amount of radiation per square metre you receive from the sun, which is 1,361 watts per metre squared. That's hitting a, a square metre that's facing directly towards the sun, and it's above the atmosphere. On a cloudy day, you'll get less. So how much of this is hitting the Earth? Well, the Earth has a curved shape. So if we get the radiation coming in, some places like here it lands face on, so you will indeed get 1361 watts per square metre. But then you've got places like here, where the sun's coming in at a low angle, so it'll be spread over more area, so you get less than that. How can we work that all out? Well, in principle we could integrate over the surface, but there's an easier way. We could imagine replacing the Earth with a coin-shaped object at right angles. So just a disk facing straight towards the sunlight. And this will intercept the same amount of radiation. Any ray that would have hit the Earth here will hit the Earth here. And this is now entirely face on, so it's easy to calculate. So the amount of energy in see, is equal to the area. So it's a disk, radius r. Um, surface area of a disk is pi r squared times the solar constant, let's call that, I don't know, k. So that's the amount of energy coming in. How much energy is going out? Well, this is given by the normal equation for radiation, which is radiation out equals the surface area, which will be equals another z, Stefan Boltzmann constant sigma, t to the fourth. Now we're assuming here that the emissivity is 1, that is to say it's a perfect radiator, a so-called black body, but in the previous page we'd also assumed that it was absorbing all the light from the sun, so it was a perfect absorber. Um, let's say it only absorbed half and emitted half, that would cancel out. So as long as the emissivity and the absorptivity are the same, then this should cancel out. So let's make that assumption. So in this case, what's the area? Now the Earth is radiating from all sides. It's radiating in all directions. So the area is the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. 4 pi r squared. Um, sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, which is equal to 5.67 by 10 to the minus 8 watts 
per meter squared per Kelvin to the minus 4. So we can set energy in equals energy out. So we get 4 pi r squared sigma t to the fourth equals the energy input, which is k times pi r squared. To rearrange this, so let's we can get rid of the pi's, get rid of the r squared. Just got k on that side, four sigma t to the fourth. So we get the t of the Earth if it's in equilibrium. So this is assume equilibrium. Is equal to k over 4 sigma and we'll take the fourth root so it's taking the um, taking the 4 across to the bottom taking the sigma across to the bottom so you get k equal t to the fourth equals k over 4 sigma then take the fourth root to get rid of that okay now is that plausible um, K is units of watts power per square metre. Um, sigma is power per square metre, K to the minus 4. So this has got units of K to the 4, take the 4th root, temperature. So temperature equals temperature, so dimensions check. Dimensions check. Let's substitute in some numbers. Uh, we end up that T equals, if you plug in numbers, 278 Kelvin, which is, given that absolute zero is minus 273, that's about 5 degrees C. Which isn't too far wrong, but it is a bit cold. Um, the Earth's average temperature is actually about 20 degrees C. Clearly it's colder in some places, like Canberra in midwinter and warmer in others. But on average, it's about 20 degrees. Um, so this is a bit of a low temperature. And that, in fact, is where the greenhouse effect goes in. We normally think of the greenhouse effect as being bad, warming the Earth up by blocking out going radiation. But in fact, it's kind of, there's a greenhouse effect even without human pollution, which is quite good, and keeps the temperature up quite a bit over this rather frigid value. So it's numerically roughly plausible. And that's how you calculate temperatures of planets.